Stalkers! Hello, Winterwoods, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations with Miles Edgeworth, and my name is Skinny Mini. And I'm, uh, Pharaoh. <laughs> wow. You forgot, who, you forgot who you are? For a little bit. Oh, my lord. Ah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say Miles Edgeworth, so, yeah. Alright, what did he, he wishes. Anyway, so, last episode. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I was a little... That's a little pity. Um, <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Last episode, we finished up the first case, Turnabout Visitor, so now we're about to do, uh, what, Turnabout Airlines is what it was called? Yep. So let's go ahead and start that. Yes, saving. Kay. Yeah, okay. All right, save. Yes, you're saving. Mm-hmm. I've been saved. There we go. Oh, Turnabout. Oh, what silhouette is this? I don't know. Uh, okay, confirm. I okay. The murder that occurred in my office. The return of the great thief Yetagarasu. Thinking back, everything began on that fateful day two days ago. Two day. Oh, wait, so now we're going back into. Ah! Uh oh! Oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's a ghost. Ooh. That makes sense, right? <laughs> yes. I fly. Yes, everything began high up in the air, 9,000 feet above to be precise. Oh. Thank you for flying fly I something. We are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. We are asking all passengers to please return to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. Oh! Is that wine now, or is that really blood? I don't know. Let's pan <laughs> up and see. Or oh, maybe wait. not. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, dang, Edgeworth, she said put on your seatbelt. <laughs> What uh, did see, he do to get flung to the floor like that? Jeez. Well, look, he's he's at the airport. D this thing has a bar. Damn, I, I've never I've never been on a plane that's like this. Hmm. Well. He's he's drunk. All right, that's he's drunk. <laughs> that's why he's on the floor. Uh, actually, you can read for Edgeworth if you want, because uh, since Scumshoe's not here. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm. <sighs> chicka chicka chicka. Oh, jeez. All right. Why do I feel like I just woke up from a horrible nightmare? 6.13, huh? Guess I was out cold for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Slight turbulence indeed. But why are you on the floor, bruh? Yeah, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. For your safety, we ask that you return to your seats. And fasten your seatbelts. I suppose turbulence is to be expected on a flight. Though admittedly, I'm, I'm less uncomfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Oh. Hmm? What's this? A travel wallet? But it's not mine. How did someone else's travel wallet wind up in my pocket? Ugh! My head! Why would this head go away? Because you're hungover. That's exactly- yeah, I told you he's drunk! <laughs> I'll take care of, the, of this travel wallet later. I'll hand it off to an attendant. Ugh! From earthquake-like turbulence to an elevator. Hmm. Hmm. What am I doing hesitating like this? Actually, I know full well why, why I hesitate. It was when I was still but a young child. Really? We have to go to this every time? Yeah, you got they gotta shove it in our faces. And, uh, I mean, there's gonna be people who, have, who haven't played any of the games before. They just probably went in here for whatever reason. That's it happens. True. But, yeah. Okay. I, was caught up, I was caught up in a murder that happened in an elevator. But how long am I going to let my past haunt me? Until you can it's, get over it? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing I, I'm gonna find. Oh, never mind. What the? What in the world happened? Oh! 
like, oh, she looks so cute. Uh, <clears throat> she have, she looks like a flight attendant. Uh, what? What voice should I hear? <clears throat> Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your seat. Ah! <laughs> He's dead. Please calm down. We mustn't jump to conclusions without all the facts. What's wrong? Did something happen? You, you murderer! What? No! You have it all wrong! It wasn't me! Alright, well, it looks like Edgeworth is the Maya Faye in this game. I want this airline. You gonna Do pay you the see... price for it? Maybe. Do you <laughs> see all that room that they have? My gosh. There are actually some airplanes like that. I just don't know which countries they're in. Oh. Uh... Man. Okay. <clears throat> Everyone, I am sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. I am one of your, your flight attendants today. Ro Rhoda Tenero? I think. There, there might be a pun in there somewhere, but... Yeah. Tenero? Like, Gairu? Gairu? Maybe. The spirit of justice. The spirit of justice, you know. Flashback. I was watching those videos today, too. Memories. Oh my god. I want. Edward, you want some booty. Edward wants some booty. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, we have just had a minor accident on this flight. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid. I caught a glimpse of it, and it was a murder. What? A murder? What's going on with this flight? Everyone, please calm down. There's no neat reason to panic. This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence. So until we are out of this, tur of this area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. But, but, but someone was killed, right? I mean, what about the killer? Let me off! Please, there is no need to feel threatened. We have already apprehended the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, I'm so sick of this bull. <laughs> I'm just trying here to play chess, and this is what happens. I ask that everyone please remain calm. What the hell does he do? What is he, what is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecutor. I assure you, I am not the killer. Ah, being a prosecutor doesn't make you incapable of murder, buddy. That's true. We saw now in you... last case. <laughs> now you listen here. I am not the killer. I simply found the body. <laughs> so you say, however, I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. Oh, great. Oh, is that right? I know what I saw, and there's even very strong incriminating evidence to back me up. What kind of incriminating evidence is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper authorities at our destination. Until we land, you must re you will remain in our custody by the powers vested in our captain. I am very sorry, but please understand our situation. Your situation? I'm more concerned with mine and the directions going in. I'm not about to just sit, sit idly by while I get accused of murder. And Miss Tenero, is it? Yes. I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance to do what? But a chance to plead my case. And a chance to ask what you meant by incriminating evidence just now. Um. And to accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give a proper defense, can a professional flight attendant inside of you really call this action righteous? You have a point. Very well, I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please make it quick. Of course, as you wish. Good. Very well then. Let's get it. Let's get started. I know for a fact that I didn't kill that man in the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence she has up her sleeve. But I'm certain it doesn't fit with how the crime really occurred. 
Oh. Okay, so no investigation first? No, we're just gonna hear the testimony. Alright, what you saw, girl? I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. The scene I saw in front of the elevator. It was you, standing there with flesh, uh, fresh blood dripping off the murder weapon. If you could please cooperate, we'll turn you over just as soon as we land. That's it? That's her evidence? I don't think you could ask for a more per perfect witness testimony. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Not really. It's hardly perfect when there's a gaping hole in it. What is he? I like how he's leaning over because his hands are tied. <laughs> and he still had that smirk on his face. He's like, I know what I'm about to do. Right. Okay, so she swears it's... Oh, we don't have any evidence to well, start... Can, oh. we, can we take a look at the evidence we have? Yeah. Here's our bitch. Okay. Oh, proof of pr profession, however, I prefer to keep it in my pocket. Aww. Oh. Uh, uh. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Hee hee hee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we looked, we're looking at the evidence, so let's see, we, we have the travel wallet picked up off the floor in front of the elevator, it's, is it mine, whose is it, we can't check it, so, that's weird, uh, crime scene notes, the body was found at 6.15am inside the elevator stopped at the first floor lounge, okay, and then we have the Sky Magazine, oh, the Sky Magazine, do people actually buy stuff from there? I, I'd assume so. Hmm. I always heard it was like really expensive. Huh. So I took a ch I checked it and it says the flight itinerary and then all times shown correspond to our departure time zone. Okay. According to this, it, this is all times shown to our departure time zone. Okay. And we said they found a body like around 6 15 or 15? so. Yeah, but we don't know what time zone we're in. Right. Uh, so. Well, that's that. I, that could possibly be it. But if we assume, like you know, still, still the same time zone, then apparently there was a movie going on while that movie. was happening. There was. Well, well, yeah. Take a look at the, the itinerary. See how the movie is clocked in from six to eight. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Nice. Who knows? I honestly don't remember any of this. So this is why I say it's semi-blind. So. Gotcha. Eh. You All right, check, so, uh -huh. also, I'm sorry, you can also check the crime scene notes if you want, if you haven't already. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Unfortunately, I'm certain you are the killer. The scene I saw in front of the elevator, it was you standing there with the fresh blood dripping off the murder weapon. So, press on that, because we don't know what the murder weapon is. Mm. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> the murder weapon dripping with blood. Really, now. I swear that was the grisly scene I saw before me. Thank goodness it wasn't a passenger who saw, or there'd be widespread panic by now. As I recall, you were quite panicked yourself at the time. Hmm. Excuse me? You were scared enough to mistreat the situation and accuse me of murder. Nonsense! Professional flight attendants cannot afford to be that flustered. Is she twitching? Is she? Yeah, yeah, she, she is. is. Oh, she it's is. funny. <laughs> it's I uh, <laughs> It's what's her name all over again. Oh god. <laughs> I witnessed the murder scene in uh scene and now I'm listening to your defense, all with a smile. Apparently you also lie with a smile on your face. Ben, I'm scared. Well, I actually have something we can I think we can use in that statement. Uh the one we just pressed on? Mm-hmm. Isn't the travel wallet? Yeah, because she saw that we just picked it up, and that's how she saw us, right? Yeah, so present that mug. Objection! Miss Tenero. What? With all the yelling all of a sudden? Ugh, force of habit. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Miss Tenero, you say you saw the murder weapon dripping with blood. Is that correct? Uh, yes, all that blood. Just recalling that scene sends a chill down my spine. Sorry, but your so-called professional flight attendant training has failed you. Boom! What? 
I'd like to direct your attention to this. Do you know what this is? It's a travel wallet, right? But it looks a little big and bulky. <laughs> Boo! Uh, okay. So. Well, I guess they can be big and bulky as well. Alright. <laughs> the thing you saw me holding when I discovered a dead body in the elevator was this very travel wallet, Mr. Nero. A what? Impossible! Now then, do you still think I'm the killer? That I killed him with a travel wallet? Uh, but, but, I, no, but I, I saw blood dripping from the wallet. I know I did. As you can see, this wallet is clearly stained. But if you would be so kind as to take a whiff, I think you agree it's only grape juice. Ah, uh, then, uh, then. That's right. You mistook grape juice for blood. The murder weapon dripping with blood does not, in fact, exist. No! There. That should clear up these that pesky accusation. Uh-oh. Wait just a sec. That is... I mean, even a wallet could be deadly if it was wrapped around something heavy. I demand that you show me what's inside. Uh, please. Oh, she's trembling and attacked on please at the end. <laughs> Sounds like I got her. But there's no need to look inside. Even you can tell from his appearance that it's light. No, I, I can't be sure of anything until I see the contents of that wallet for myself. Uh, she's a persistent one. I suppose we have no choice but to see what's inside. Mr. Nero, if you would be as so kind as to open a wallet and check its contents for me. All right. I usually don't pry into passengers' belongings, but we have no choice here. Okay, um, I guess we just push the, the button. The button. Push. The. Ah! But, <clears throat> it seems that this passport is all that's in there. As you saw, there's nothing but a passport inside. This renders your wallet was the murder weapon argument a moot. Wouldn't you agree? <sighs> Apparently not. <laughs> Please, hear me out, Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> what is it now? Uh, well, I was wondering, whose passport is it exactly? Uh, can I take a look? Why not? I'm rather curious myself. But this is... Oh, that's the guy that's dead. Yep. What's his name? Ha... Wait. Hicks Ackby? Ackby? Ack Ackby Hicks. Ackby Hicks. Ackby Hicks! Where is he from? Republic of... Baloney? Virginia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I was being stupid there. I understand. Ah. Uh, yeah. So it's case. like papers, please. Oh yeah. Oh, I want to play that game though. Aristotska. Glory to Aristotska. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, j just as I thought. This travel wallet belongs to Mr. Ackby Hicks. Which makes it the victim's property. Well, okay. You you stole the victim's wallet, didn't you? How dare you! You said it yourself. You claimed to be holding this wallet in your hand while I found you. <sighs> Perhaps I did misconstrue the wallet for the murder weapon, but it seems that I wasn't wrong about who the culprit is. What? Woman? You making no kind of sense. Okay, let's continue. Phone. As you Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, as you claimed, the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is something you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with the vile deed. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks' money, weren't you? Oh, no, I already know we could present evidence. It's like, ho woman, I'm a prosecutor. <laughs> Do you see what I'm wearing? I'm wearing a freaking frifly thing. A cravat. It's, yeah. <laughs> That's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> this cravat ain't cheap. This is silk, woman. <laughs> All right. So even though I didn't have the murder weapon on me, you still suspect me, I see. You stood up at the crime scene with the victim's wallet in your hands. 
how can I turn a blind eye and not suspect you of foul play? Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna go to her statement when she talk about the money. Cause money, 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 money. you were out to steal Mr. Hicks' money, weren't you? Nope. Because if you look at the crime scene, no. Look at all that money on the floor. Got some change there too. <laughs> Present that mug. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> I wonder if I might get a word in, Miss Tanero. What is it now? Miss Tanero. I wonder if you not if you noticed a contradiction within your own testimony. What are you talking about? It's simply impossible that the motive for this murder was mo monetary theft. One glance at the crime scene should have told you that. What about this scene with proof that the motive for the murder was not for the money? Uh, the money on the flow. Present! <laughs> if I might direct your attention to the things strewn about all on the floor. Ah! That's right. The floor is covered in bills and coinage. Coinage. <laughs> By your rationale, these were, the, these were the very things the killer was after. Ah! I think we can assume that the walls fell during the victim's struggle with his killer. And I would think the killer would have noticed something like mo money scattering everywhere. Furthermore, as you can see, there were no effort made by the killer to gather the money. Uh, but, but the wallet! Ah, yes, the wallet. You will also recall that the only thing in it was Mr. Hicks' passport. Uh. If you are really, if you are really insisting that it was a crime based on greed, then you're claiming and it was all for an empty travel wallet. I... 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 Forgive me! Please! I want a refund. But hey, what the heck? Are, are you saying the defendants are wrong? So the guy is the killer? Oh, uh, don't believe her. Everyone, it's ever, a trick. <laughs> Will you all please be quiet? <sighs> Miss Tenero. Uh, yes. You lost your cool when you saw the dead body. Plus, the lounge was dark and looking into the lights from the elevator. It's easy to see how you mistook the wall in my hand for the murder weapon. I take no offense that you thought that I was the killer. Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> Thank you for releasing me. Gaster? What are you doing here? Exactly. Or Mr. Saturn? I don't know. Mr. What's going <laughs> What? Oh, the book is different. Uh, oh, sir? God. Yeah. Oh, damn it all. Uh, I'm guessing you don't like this character. No. <laughs> what, what is it now? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> What the heck was that? <laughs> I just made a noise. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Miss Tenero, if you couldn't please translate, I'd be much obliged. Uh, it sounds like Borginian, but I. I don't understand any of it. There's another attendant on this flight who. Bonshot, what is going? Who the. I. I can't talk, apparently. <laughs> I said that he is giving the runabout! <laughs> I don't require an interpreter. I speak English just well. I see? Then why you. did you start saying in English instead of board... Whatever. Yeah. Are you the, the attendant? Uh, yes, sir. I wanted this person to be under the arrest until we arrive at the airport. What the hell's he doing? <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean. <laughs> I'm, nope, I'm not gonna say anything. He's rubbing his. What? Statue. The... He's rubbing his statue! He's waxing it, like Mr. Miyagi! Okay. It's not what you think it is. <sighs> it's not some mini window for his penis, alright? Okay. Continue. 
I'm sorry, sir, but what exactly are you hoping for? What is it you want? I am finished talking to the likes of you. Please, I would li I'd like to hear why you would like me to be held under arrest until we land. Are you? How dare you try to waste my time? You were the one who stuck your nose into my affairs. I wanted to spend even at least one more second with my precious heart. I have no time for other things. I know what you are. I see it through you. Insolvent. Yes, I, I am pretty sure that's how you say it in English. I think he what? means insolent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it says it right here. Well, I'd hope that I don't dissolve in water, but I don't think that's what you meant. Mm. Oh dear. I'm sorry, but I don't think I caught your name. I am Zink LeBlanc the Second. I am very wealthy man in the Bourgeonia. But I am not an ordinary rich man. I am an odd deal, a rich seller of beauty. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc, what did you mean just now? A uh, pardon? Um, when you said that Mr. Edric was giving me the runabout. I have to explain? Unbelievable. I will say it once and only once. I do not have even a second to waste. A time is a money, as they say. Yes, and yet you continue to blather on. I saw it. Yes, I did. I saw the victim go onto the elevator. Going down to the lounge. And it was exactly at six o'clock. Okay. And what's the significance of that time? At six, he says. Wait, you saw him at six? Ah! Oh, what's the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? He understands, I see. Uh, Miss Attendant, what time did you discover the body? Well, it was a little after that patch of turbulence, so I would say around 6.15. Ah! Hicks was his name, was it? Then I say the man Hicks was killed in a 15 minute time span. I now I think he did it. <laughs> and the only person in the lounge at the time was his prosecutor, yes? Yeah, I was in my shit the whole time. But me too, I was watching a movie and drawing a fine glass of grape juice. We know that's wine. Mm. Well, yeah. I was still eating some furnace, eh? The other passengers have an alibi, so you have no problem with them, I suppose. Uh, no com compliment. Wait, compliance, I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a single word against this, right? I have no way of discounting what, what you have put forth at this moment, point, but it wasn't me. Oh, that's all you say. But you do. But do you have uh, what you say in evidence? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, are you really the culprit after all? Mr. LeBlanc, I suppose you are quite certain of what you saw. Enough to give testimony? Well, of course. I was looking at that man the whole time. He was uh, playing with that annoying little, um, uh, uh, small uh, machine the whole time. Uh, machine? Uh, yes, that's what you people call it in English, right? Uh, it, was, it was making crazy with the uh, click, click, click. I feel like you're imitating your dad. What? You had to go there. I'm sorry. Like, I know I, I'm genuinely like, I'm not trying to make fun of him. I'm like, you because whenever you talk about your family, you do that for your dad. So I'm like, <laughs> it, it fits. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm just messing with you too. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> From that description, it sounds like some sort of small computer. I believe that Mr. LeBlanc is talking about is a cell phone. I have to say that I did see him playing with it quite a bit myself. Simple cell phone. A laptop will organize, I can see, but that's kind of low budget. Uh, what do you mean low budget? Have you? Well, I mean, I gotta get you. New, I gotta get a new phone myself. I'm not. I gotta pay like a hundred dollars. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? You mean low budget? And then I hate that that noise that the machine has had. Uh, and not a fragment of beauty. And all that it produce uh, ugly sounds. But anyway, I know what I saw. Uh, Miss Tenero. Yes. I was wondering if I might be granted permission to examine the crime scene. Uh, what? You want to examine the crime scene? If you would grant me a little measure of time, I'm sure I could, pro I could produce a real culprit. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. A uh, fox in a duck pen. What? Uh, yes, I think that's how you say it in English. It's a uh, fox guarding the henhouse, and I believe my innocence was proven earlier. 
And if I'm given a chance, I can clear up all the remaining doubts. Mr. Nero, if you wait until we arrive, there's a lot, there's a good chance that some evidence will have been destroyed by then. I understand. Let me see what the captain has to say. That this should not be approved. Please, Mr. LeBlanc. In an emergency, all decisions are to be made by the captain alone. Now please wait here while I go ask the captain what to do. I'll be right back. You are not planning to erase evidence when you are doing your investigation, yes? Of course not. Ah, we shall see. Mr. Edgeworth, you have the captain's permission to investigate the crime scene. Wait, what? what? Unbelievable! I'm in your debt, Mr. Nero. However, there is one condition. I am to supervise you. Can you agree to that? Of course. I see no problem with that stipulation. It's only natural, as I still, I, as I am still the suspect in this case. I take full responsibility to watch and watch Mr. Edgeworth every move. I hope this is reassurance enough that there will be no foul play. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, shall we proceed? If you should need my help with anything, please feel free to touch the partner button. It's time to head to the scene of the crime, the first floor lounge. Which is over there. Thank you, game. <laughs> oh, cool! You got a girl partner. Hey, girl. Hey. Got some, some Tenero on this flight. Got some Tenero on the side. Woo! Uh, ooh, okay. Alright, that's enough. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I think that'll do it for this episode, you guys. So, in the next one, I guess we will do our investigation of this case. So far, it's interesting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like LeBlanc. I think he did it now. Yeah, I mean, I just don't like the character. I, I hope to God I'm giving him justice in my voice. I have no idea. Uh, I think it's great. I'm going all over the board with this. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you guys so very much for watching. And if no one's told you that they love you today, I do. And as they say in Portuguese, Oh my God, I swear. Oh. Bye. Sorry. <laughs>